Let's get one thing straight. You're not ugly. You've just been taking videos wrong. Have you ever tried to record a video because you had something important to share? But once you looked at it, you thought, that can't be how I look. I've been there. I used to never upload videos of myself and when I finally did, I over-edited them to the point that I look like an oil painting. It's one of the things I just accepted as, I guess I'm just not photogenic. But the truth is, you're all really good looking. You just don't know how to translate that on camera. It's all about knowing the right techniques. And you don't need fancy equipment. Your phone is enough. Because even if you have the best camera, but you don't know how to use it, you'll still end up hating what you see. So let me break down to you how I create high quality videos using my phone. Because it only takes a few tricks to make videos you'll love to share. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sina Pod and I'm a brand strategist working with companies like Adidas and BMW. And on this channel, I help creative professionals design their dream career by leveling up their personal brands. So let's get into how to create videos with your phone. First of all, clean your lens. Of course, you've been squishing your face onto your phone and touching it with your hands the whole day. Obviously, you're gonna look foggy on camera. So try to get the small thing that comes with your glasses and just wipe off in the back and in the front wherever the camera is you'll see what a major difference it makes when you create videos. Next, let's free yourself from auntie selfies. Do you know why you always look bad in selfies? Because the front camera of your phone distorts your face. It literally makes you look like a different person. So of course, use the back camera of your phone because it creates high quality video. But if you use the selfie function, this is what you do. Look at the difference between these two videos. On the left side, you can see the distorted selfie video. And on the right side, I'm literally stretching out my arm to eternity and zoom in and that's the face structure you actually have and voila you just retired from the auntie selfies you're welcome posture if you sit sit straight if you stand stand straight hunchbacks are not cute the next thing might sound like a surprise to you but iron your clothes the reason why you don't like to look at yourself in videos is because you look sloppy i had to learn this the hard way i asked a friend once to take pictures of me and she literally said your hijab is so wrinkly, you're not a guy, you have to iron your clothes. Not to say that guys shouldn't iron their, your clothes, okay, you should do that too. However, women just normally have more elements that we put into our outfits. So if one piece of cloth that we're wearing looks sloppy, the entire person is gonna look sloppy. So before you create videos, go and iron your clothes. If you're a person like me, just buy clothes that don't wrinkle in the first place. Next is stability. Stop shaking your lens around. It's going to make people feel seasick. Okay, so either get a tripod. There are some really good ones, even cheap ones. You can check some out on my Amazon storefront. Or just put your phone on a book rack or like stack a bunch of books and put them there so your phone is steady when you record. The next lighting baby light is your best friend or your worst enemy when i first started making videos for my youtube channel you can actually look at the very first videos i am literally sitting on my bed in my childhood home although i was already married because we couldn't afford a place and i was sitting on my bed in front of the window now i'm from germany in germany you know there's not a lot of sun all day so i actually had to calculate what time of the day the sun would come into the window so i would be able to record with natural light on my face so if i can make it work you can make it work here are a few tricks that will make all the difference number one never stand in front of the light come on now you should know that next natural light is best it's really flattering just don't stand directly in the sun because it'll wash you out if you don't have natural light and you have the money go and get a diffuse light or a ring light you will find some for around 20 bucks face the light directly or slightly angled to you directly will wash you out a little bit but it might look flattering on some people but i always like to go with the 45 angle rule so try to have the light 45 angle above you facing you if you don't have a professional light that you can move you can also try to bounce light off a white wall so instead of directly standing in the sunlight which we already said is bad you're going to bounce off the natural light on a white wall or a normal you know light that you have in the room against a white wall and then face you this way you have the same effect as a diffuse light because it basically isn't sharp on your skin but it gets bounced off a surface avoid light that directly comes from above you like a ceiling light because it's gonna give you eye bags and you don't want that if you shoot outside footage mornings and evenings golden hour is the best way to shoot try to avoid shooting in mid heat and when the sun is directly above you because again 
eye bags. And if you're looking for equipment, I have all my lists linked below. Next, shoot for the platform. If you shoot for social media, shoot vertical. If you shoot for YouTube, shoot horizontal. This way, you know exactly what's in frame and what's not. We don't want those black bars on YouTube and we don't want to squint our eyes, go blind, trying to see a horizontal video on social media. So make it easy for your viewer. Next is the rule of thirds. And this is the most important thing if you want to make your videos look vaguely cinematic. The idea is that when you look at a frame, which is the video that you're creating, it could be horizontal or vertical, that you have three lines that create grids. And your subject, meaning whatever you film, in this case, probably yourself, should be on one of those intersections. It can be on one, on two, or on three intersections at the same time. So see this when you shoot, turn on the grid function on your camera and it will divide your frame into those three. And here are two things to remember. If you speak into the camera, your eyes should be on the upper line of the grids, both in vertical and horizontal. And the other rule is whatever is more important gets two grids, whatever is less important gets one grid. So let's say you're shooting a sunrise and you wanna actually see more of the sky, then the sky should have two thirds of the grid and the grass or whatever the ground is, one third. Let's say you are shooting the ocean and you feel like the water is more interesting, then the sky should have one third and the water should have two thirds. Next find your angle. As I'm saying this, I'm actually wanting to position myself like this because this is a good angle for myself. I just want to tell you that everyone has their angles. Everyone, okay? Everyone. You're not ugly. You just don't know your angles. So how do you find yours? Put your phone in front of you and move your head around. Just like on the iPhone when you do like face recognition and it asks you to like move around the circle so it can see every part of your face. You want to do the same on your camera. You want to record yourself and then you want to take screenshots. So you record yourself with the back camera of your phone and then when you see the final video, you see screenshots of yourself and you will see what angles are the best for you. Ideally, don't make a weird face when you do this. Ideally, try to look nice or like, you know, feeling yourself. So you actually look advantageous when you go into your different angles. I always fell into the trap of doing the Y2K angle of literally going like this in a selfie style until I figured out by accident, pure accident, that some of my angles are actually from slightly below and I look quite good from that lower angle, which I was fearing my entire life because everyone just said like, it's gonna give you a double chin. Not everyone, some. Maybe you look really good from a lower angle. You just have to try it out. Next, imagine talking to Sara. Now, you can swap the name however you want, but I feel like everyone knows a person named Sara, and I definitely know a lot. So when I create videos, I always imagine talking to that person instead of just talking to a phone, a camera, or the entire world. So when you speak, try talking to your friend without using their name. This will help you go from the stiff, shy, stuck up version of yourself to the real you. Next, know thy equipment. You can have the best phone, the best camera, but if you don't know how to use it, it's basically a brick. So use 10 minutes a day to get familiar with your tools. You can watch YouTube videos, you can ask ChatGPT how to use it, or watch TikToks on your equipment to find out what are the hacks that you don't know yet. Here are a few that will help your videos get instantly better. Number one, AF lock. This locks in exposure and focus on your phone. So even when you move, it doesn't change lighting or focus. Number two, disable HDR. Every time you record something in HDR and export it to a video editing software, it will look like literal garbage, okay? It looked like garbage. I know this is a personal preference, but I do like to edit sometimes on my laptop, even with phone footage and HDR footage just it loses all its color and it makes you look pale and you'll never get the right colors back. So turn that off. Next, shoot in 4K and 24 frames per second if you have enough storage. If not, shoot in 1080p. Although I'm a person that has always a full storage, I personally like to shoot in 4K even though my storage is always full because the social media platforms usually compress the quality of your videos anyways. So I'd like to always start from a higher quality and compress it down through the app instead of starting from a lower quality and compressing it down even more. Next, 
have a video wardrobe. When you shoot videos regularly, you get a feeling for what clothes make you look good and what clothes make you look horrible. Not because they actually look horrible, but because they look horrible on camera. I have some of my favorite pieces that I started to wear in videos and they looked so low quality. It's just because the fabric doesn't translate very well on camera. So you need to find out what materials, what colors, what shapes fit you, not just in real life, but also on video. Two important things, colors and fabrics. Some fabrics just look horrible on camera and some colors might wash you out. So here are two things that you need to do. Find out what colors fit your skin tone and find out what fabrics look premium on camera. Then make a wardrobe that only consists of those colors and fabrics. So you can go back to it anytime you shoot a video. For example, I bought the same dress in six colors because the fabric looks really good on camera and the colors were specifically chosen, chosen because of my color season. And I don't have to spend half an hour thinking about what to wear because I basically swap the dress with a different shirt trying to coordinate the colors. Next, check yourself. You don't want to shoot for hours and then find out you had parsley stuck in your teeth the whole time. True story. But the issue is, if you shoot videos with your back camera, you obviously don't see yourself. Where am I? How do I look? What is in frame? Do I have parsley in my teeth? One thing you can do is position a mirror next to your recording station so you can always check yourself before you start the camera. However, that doesn't really help you with the problem of framing. So here's what you do. Enable screen mirroring and then just use your laptop as a screen to see yourself while you film. Or connect your phone with a cable to your laptop. Open QuickTime Player, choose your phone as an input and voila, you can check yourself while you're recording your video. Next is audio. Here's the truth. People would watch a low res video if it has good audio, but they wouldn't watch a high res video with horrible audio quality. If you talk to the camera, get good headphones. They usually have a built in mic or a laugh mic, again, 20 bucks or do a voiceover. Next, movement. If you shoot vlogs, you always have to incorporate some kind of movement into it. But how do you create a high quality view without being a cinematography expert or having a gimbal? Here's how. There are only three movements to choose from. Either the camera is still and the subject is moving, the camera is moving and the subject is still, or the camera is moving and the subject is moving. Now, I know we all think about the fourth version, the camera is still and the subject is still, but that would be a picture, so don't do that. Next is know what you want to say. Practice what you want to say before you hit record. You can speak it into a mirror, write it down, talk to a friend, or literally go for a walk and talk to yourself. This is what I do before I do podcasts or interviews, just to hear myself speaking out the words that I want to use later on. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to get out the words before so you don't scramble around with them later on when you record. If you record a longer video, either for social media or for YouTube, I recommend writing down only the first sentence in full and the rest of the points you want to talk about in bullet points so you can just speak in a very natural way but the first sentence is really good to write down because it's basically your hook and you want to make sure that it's quick understandable and grabs people's attention most importantly do more the faster you create horrible videos the faster you'll create good ones sure people always tell you oh it just takes time but in reality, it takes repetition. You can shoot 50 videos in a year or you can shoot 50 videos in a week. Guess what will make you fall in love with videos faster? So grab your phone, shoot a video with it right now. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to get it done. And if you're saying, oh man, I'm just too introverted for videos. I've tried it. It's not me. Then this video will help you find a content format that would fit to your personality. So definitely check that out and I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.